Good afternoon. Today is the 7th of August, although it'll probably be the 10th of August when you see this, and it's time for the monthly rant, thinly disguised as penetrating automotive market analysis, the top 10 best-selling cars of July 2020. It's a pleasure in this very strange situation that we've been in for the last few months to be able to bring you some really positive news from the UK automotive sector. In July 2020, there was an increase of 11.3%. That is wonderful news. This is the figures when you compare July 2019 to July 2020. So when I say an increase of 11.3% in total, that means that 11.3% more cars were sold last month than in July 2019. Now July is generally not the most sort of a thrilling month for automotive sales in this country, but, and, but yet it's been very good. The private sector's up by 20.4%. Excellent. The fleet sector's up by 5.2%. The business sector's down by about 12%. I think we can understand that a lot of people have been on furlough and everything like that. So, yes, it, it, you know, it's perhaps not um, universally good news for everyone. But the business sector's only 1.8% of the market. So it's not that significant in some way. Of course, diesel continues to decline. It's something we don't talk about much on the channel anyway, because that has been the long-standing joke since the first ever video that I made re two years ago. That's declining by 26%. The market share is um, now actually a huge, huge difference from even last year. The market share in July 2019 was 25% and now it's 16.5% huge decrease in the diesel market share petrol's marginally up by 0.3% uh, it's now got a 58% um, market share it used to be actually 64% so although the number of sales has increased and it's a very small increase over July 2019 the market share has decreased and that's because battery electric vehicles are up by an astounding 259 percent 259% increase the market share used to be a year ago about 1.4 percent and now it's 4.7 percent plug-in hybrid electric vehicles things like the Mitsubishi Outlander that um, is a 320% increase year on year. Astonishing. Market share used to be 1.1%, it's now 4.3%. Even things like a Range Rover can now be had as a plug in hybrid. Hybrid electric vehicles, 65% uh, increase. Used to be a 5% share of the market, now it's 7.3%. Mild hybrid diesel, things like the uh, Audi A4 2.0-litre diesel and the Kia Sportage 2.0-litre diesel, that is up by 147%. That's a 3.4% share of the market now. It was one5 And mild hybrid petrol, uh, about stuff like the Suzuki Ignis, that is up by 241%. And um, market share is about 6%. It used to be 2%. So... Wow, some very, very big and encouraging increases in a lot of market sectors. So if we look at the best sellers for July 2020, they're broadly similar now, and this has been the first real time we've seen this, to the best sellers for 2020 as a whole. So first is a Vauxhall Corsa, 5,455. Second place, a Ford Fiesta. 5,421. I imagine at the moment Vauxhall got some kind of incentive on the Corsa. Uh, this is the new Corsa F, which has a Corsa E variant as well, uh, which is the electric one, not the previous generation Corsa. It was also called a Corsa E. It's very confusing. So 
tussling out between the two of them. That's been going on for years, no surprise there. Third place, Ford Focus, 4,981. Fourth place, the Box Bargain Golf, 3,936. Probably the Golf having slightly lower sales than usual is just due to the Mark 8 not coming up to speed in terms of supply yet. That, I'm sure, will uh, rectify itself later in the year. Fifth is Mercedes-Benz E-Class, 3,922. Sixth is the Nissan Qashqai, 2,971. Qashqai has been on sale for an awfully long time now. I just imagine the, the, the discounts on those are, are really good. Volkswagen Polo, number seven, tw uh, 2,932. The Mini, as you know, the electric Mini is now out. I think it's available for order. Planet Auto had one of those on test on their channel um, pretty recently. That was 2,906. So there's the figures towards the bottom end of this chart and also at the top end are very close. Uh, ninth is the Volkswagen Tiguan, 2,880. And then right at the bottom, the Ford Cougar that's recently come out, actually the new version, which is available as a plug-in hybrid, uh, 2,686. When we look at each brand individually, as I always say when I do these videos, we're looking at the percentage change in the number of cars sold between July 2019 and July 2020 in this case. I can also tell you the market share, which I, I will only tell you if it's significant. Um, so, yes, if I, for example, I've got a Bath was first on my list. In 2019, they sold 221 cars in July, and this year they sold 213. That is a 0.12% market share and a percentage change of 3.62 negatively. So if I say something's down by 21.2%, then you'll understand why I say that. It's actually pretty good news for the market overall. As I said, anything um, above 11.3% is above average. Although some manufacturers, for example, Alfa Romeo, second on the list, are not doing very well at all. The percentage change to them is actually minus 28.3% over this time last year. Alpine, for some reason, I'm not sure Alpine actually will sell too many more cars. They're thinking of sort of withdrawing the brand entirely from the market, which would be a shame, um, but I gather it's quite a good fun car. Uh, but nevertheless, tiny numbers, only sold 10 last month, that's a percentage change of 65.5% so negative. Audi, much better news, and there is a lot of good news this month. They are 16.4% up, sold just over 12,000 cars. Bentley, they're up by 2.6%, they sold 158 cars. BMW, very strong sales, no, help, no doubt, helped by the sit in the group that uh, one, of my, one of my friends works for. Um, that's up by 24.4% and they sold uh, just, over, just under 11,500 cars. Citroen, for some reason, big decrease, don't really know why. 24.9% decrease, just over 3,000 cars. Dacia, they sold just over 2,500 cars, at a 77% increase on last year. Very good. Uh, Deus, similar to Citroen, they had a bit of a decrease. They only sold 228 cars, 15% decrease. Fiat, in contrast to Abarth and Alfa Romeo, they sold... Um, just under 2,000 cars, that's a 32% increase. Ford, one of the only increases I think this year for Ford, and it's actually just under the market uh, average increase. Um, it's 10.35% uh, uh, increase, just under 19,000 cars. Honda did very well, just not a mate was doing too well at the moment in the market, but it's good to see them actually bucking the trend, 11.85% increase and just over 3,300 cars. Hyundai, they sold um, 5,400 cars, but it's a decrease of 4%. Jaguar, um, they sold about 2,750 cars, that's an increase of 9%. Jeep, another brand in the FCA portfolio, they did very, very well. 23% increase and just over 550 cars. 
Kia. Very, very good sales for Kia. Um, a very, very good month for them overall, really. 28% uh, increase, just over 9,000 cars. Very, very good. When you consider that, you know, Fiat only sold 1,900 cars or so, and Kia sold 9,000, and Fiat, that is still a good increase. So you can really see how, you know, dominant some of the Korean brands are becoming in our market now. Land Rover, British brand, of course, um, increase of 38%, just over 5,700 cars, so still very strong sales from some of the home brands too. Lexus, uh, increase of 17%, just over 1,300 cars. Maserati, uh, decrease of 17%, although they only sold 64 cars. It's not a, not a, not a mainstream brand over here at all. Uh, Mazda, they haven't been doing massively well recently, but uh, an increase of 1.2%. Uh, and uh, just over 2,800 cars. Mercedes-Benz, for some reason, a decrease in comparison with BMW. They sold um, just over 10,000 cars. That's a 15% decrease. MG, quite predictably now, for those of you who've been following this channel for some time, they sold um, just under 1,850, and that's a 78% increase, which is remarkably good. Very well done to them. Mini, similarly very good. Um, percentage increase. We, we still love our British brands over here, of course, it seems. 49% increase, uh, just under 4,500 cars. Mitsubishi, a brand to, sadly, uh, that you would have seen a video on this last week, are going to be exiting the UK market and the European market in general in a couple of years. They sold just under 1,000 cars, um, and uh, it's a 7 point... It's, uh, about eight percent decrease in market share so mg sold about double the number of cars of mitsubishi uh, last month crazy nissan um 6.2 percent increase which is good but not exceptional uh just under six thousand so just over six thousand five hundred cars uh peugeot a 12.8 percent increase which of them is really good um about six thousand four hundred cars of racing Nissan for some reason um porsche very, very good figures indeed from Porsche. 195% increase, um, just under 12,300 cars. Renault, now this is the real surprise here. They sold over 6,500 cars. Excellent, excellent result from Renault. And that's a 202% increase over July 2019 absolutely astonishing I haven't seen such good uh, um, figures from Renault I think ever when I've been looking at them very very good uh, Sayat down by 0.63% uh, just over 5,300 cars Skoda similar brand in many ways to Sayat um, buck the trend in that direction 15.5% increase at just over 6,100 cars Smart, we'll just ignore them really, um, massive decrease. Sanyong, of course I've got a Sanyong now. Um, another strong performance just like last month. They all sold 172 cars, 110% oh, increase last month. Very, very, very well done to them. Still quite a minority brand in this country, um, but yes, nevertheless, very good. Subaru, they only sold 60 cars, 42% decrease. Suzuki, um, 47% decrease, about 900 cars for some reason. Toyota, and again a brand I think on the rise here because of all these hybrids, uh, sold just under 10,000 cars, 22% increase. Vauxhall, just under 10,000 cars, um, again, um, for some reason the decrease is 6%. Volkswagen, um, not as big as an increase as you'd expect, about 3% and um, just under 16,000 cars. Volvo, again, a bit of a decrease. About 8% and 4,000 cars. I mean, overall, it's 11.25%, which I'll round up to 11.3. And um, the total number of cars sold was about 175,000. So there we are. Um, some very good news for a lot of brands there. Not so good news for others, but it's good to see a market that is buoyant and up in general. And I hope that increases in August too, and hope that continues to increase as people, you know, 
um, try to see if I has recover from what's happened. Um, anyway, thank you so much indeed for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Don't forget to like this video and to leave a comment below. Um, also got a Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Lloyd Vehicle Consulting. And uh, we'll see you next month for another stimulating market analysis for top 10 best-selling cars of August 2020.